please stand. Again, this amazing celebration between Stephanie and Bregi. I'd like to open up in a word of prayer. Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, thank you for the gift of marriage, for all the joy and love that it brings. We thank you for Bregi and Stephanie. Thank you that you have brought them together for this special day and that you hold them safely in your hands. We pray that you would richly bless them as they commit to each other today. From this day forward, that they would walk hand in hand into everything that you have destined them to be. We give our hearts and beings to you in adoration, and we welcome your Holy Spirit now. Amen. You may be seated. We are gathered here today in the presence of God in this beautiful place and before this group of friends and family to join together Stephanie and Bridget. Who blesses this woman to marry this man? I do. Okay. Which one? You guys okay? Yeah. All right, good, good. The Bible, go ahead, go ahead. The Bible reminds us of the importance and value that is in a relationship that is shared between a man and a woman. None other of God's creation has the opportunity to bring fulfillment and glory to God, but that of the union of a man and a woman. The scripture says the man named the cattle, named the birds in the air, named the wild animals, but he didn't find a suitable companion. God put the man into a deep sleep, and as he slept, he removed one of his ribs and placed it with flesh. God then used that rib that he had taken from the man to make woman and presented her to the man. The man said, finally, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, and named her woman, for she was made from man. In creation, Adam was made first and then Eve. It was so that woman might be for the man as the church was also for Christ. God was intentional about the creation of woman, even for the fact that Eve was created from the rib of Adam was significant not from his feet to be dominated by him, but from out of his side for his protection and from near his heart to know his love. Reggie and Stephanie, God's design for marriage is one that must be centered on him. God is the foundation. Marriage is the promise between two people who love each other, who trust that love, and who honor one another as individuals and in togetherness, who wish to spend the rest of their lives together. God's design for marriage enables two separate souls to join together as one, to share their desires, their longings, their dreams and their joys, and their sorrows, and to always support each other through all the uncertainties that come their way. A strong marriage is blessed by God, will nurture each of you individually. It will allow you to maintain your unique identity while growing you together in a strong relationship with each other as long as it's centered on Christ. God is creating a safe haven, safe haven for you to always be your very best self. You are becoming one flesh and designed by God. You are adding not only to your lives the affection of each other, but also the companionship and blessing of deep trust. You are agreeing to share strength, responsibilities, and love. But I will tell you, it takes more than love to make this relationship work. It takes trust to know your hearts, to know in your hearts that you only want the very best for each other. It takes dedication to stay open to one another, to learn and grow 
even when it feels difficult to do so. It takes faith to go forward together, not knowing what path God may have down your road. And ultimately, it takes a faith, both individually and together, rooted in Christ. You know, Stephanie and Bregi, Liz and I have had a chance to get to know you a little bit. We've done your mentoring. And I can tell you that every time that we spent time with you, we felt our marriage was enriched because of you guys. You know, um, although one of you likes the office more than the other, right? Yeah, yeah I think it's you, yeah. right? Good. Um, what's really neat and special uh, to me about you guys is that your relationship began at a camp. You know, I spent many years at a camp myself, and I know what that, those memories and what that feels like. Um, and I can tell you that, you know, to see both of you here today, um, it brings me great joy. And I'm rooting for you. I know the Liz is too. Everybody here is rooting for you. I mean, look around. Every one of these people here are here to support you. You know, they love you and they care about you. And ultimately, God is rooting for you. You know, he is the one who is here today making sure that this goes well. Make sense? All right, so Bregi, do you take this woman standing by your side to be your wedded wife? to live together after God's ordinance in the holiest state of matrimony. Do you promise today to love, honor, comfort, and keep her, forsaking all others and keeping yourself only unto her for as long as you both shall live? If this is your purpose, please answer. I do. I do. Stephanie, do you take this man standing by your side to be your wedded husband, to live together after God's ordinance in the holiest state of matrimony? Do you promise today to love, honor, comfort and keep him, forsaking all others and keeping yourself only unto him as long as you both shall live. Is this is your purpose? Answer, I do. I do. Okay, now Stephanie and Bregi have uh, chose to write their own vows, which I have. But before we do that, I just want to, uh, as you speak both of your vows, I want to remind you of what God's word says in regard to making a promise or a vow. Scripture tells us when a man makes a vow to the Lord or takes an oath to obligate himself by a pledge, he must not break his word, must do everything he said he would do. So with that, Bregi, we're going to go first. Hold that. I got the microphone. See y'all. Oh, there we go. Okay. Stephanie, I love you more than you know. You are an answer prayer of someone who pushes me to be a better individual every day. I never knew what opposites attract, man, until I met you five years, six months, and one day ago. I did not think that the girl I saw for the first time at summer camp in her sweats and her work t-shirt was going to be standing in front of me today saying the words, I do. I remember clicking with you right off the bat, having many common interests. One of those interests was our taste in music. I thought I was slick when I told you to come watch me DJ sometime. <laughs> One thing led to another, and before I knew it, I had your number. I was hanging out with you all the time, and we were having fun. From that moment on, the rest is history. You are beyond beautiful on the inside and out, especially today. I cannot believe that I have the honor and privilege to be your husband from this day forward. It says in Luke 1, 37, for nothing will be impossible with God. And I know that verse is true because I thought it was impossible that you would love me so tenderheartedly for as long as you have. Whether you think it or not, I have seen all the fruits of the Spirit in you, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You have not only had these traits with me, but you have had these traits with others as well. You express that in your everyday life by being an example to many people you connect with daily. I know, you are, I know people are attracted to your personality just by the way you make them feel. The value that you carry is priceless. You're gentle yet passionate heart makes you shine wherever you go. You have taught me to be motivated, work hard, and stay determined through this life full of obstacles. Over the last five and a half years, we have experienced many changes together. I am forever grateful for your love, support, 
dedication through every single step in our life together so far. And I look forward to overcoming these challenges that this life will bring us together. Thank you for teaching me how to be patient. Thank you for loving me when I come home cranky because I worked all night. Thank you for teaching me how to speak up and express my emotions because that was never the type of person I was. Thank you for positively challenging me in many areas in life to make me a better person. I am by no means even remotely close to perfect. However, I can promise you that I will do everything in my power to love you better than I ever have before from this moment forward. I promise to meet all of your needs to the best of my ability. I promise to listen to your voice and hear what you have to say first before I jump to conclusions. I promise to make you feel confident in the fact that I will always protect you physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I promise to communicate with you clearly so that we can always be on the same page. I promise to be your backbone in every life circumstance that we come across. I promise to be the leader by leading you in the right direction that will mature us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. I promise to do my best to reflect God's love through my character and my actions towards you and towards our marriage. Lastly, I promise to love you and only you through loyalty and commitment until the day that I die. I love you. Thank you, Bradley. If you can hand her the microphone. <laughs> Bradley. From the moment I saw you, I knew. I knew you were patient, kind, gentle, and loved Jesus. Although I had not spoken to you yet, I knew I wanted to marry a man exactly like you. The summer of 2014, at just 17 years old, I knew. Although I did not know your name, I remember writing your name in my journal. Lord, give me a husband just like Pastor Bob's son. <laughs> Little did I know that God was giving me just that. Five years later, on this day, December 1st, my prayers have been answered. My prayers have been answered in more ways than one. You're all that I need in life and more. Your love for Christ pours out in the way you love me and others around you. Without hesitation, you have always taken care of me and loved me so gently. Since the moment you came into my life, you have been a source of love and peace. You have helped me grow in my relationship with Christ. You have helped me build trust and faith and remind me every day to live in constant prayer. Reggie, you are the man of my dreams. You are my best friend. You are my safe space. The love I have for you is more than a feeling. My love is a choice and a promise. I promise to love you without measure. I promise to stand by your side no matter what obstacles we face. And I promise to honor and respect you. I can't wait to see what God has planned for us, the adventures you will take, and all the memories you will share. What an honor it is to spend the rest of my life as your wife. Reggie, I absolutely adore you and love you today and all the days to follow. Thank you. All right, and today Stephanie and Bradgy have chosen to use rings to symbolize your marriage. May I have the rings? Thank you. Okay, Bradgy. Okay, you're gonna place this on her finger. But before we do that, I'm gonna pause. You can do that, you're right. Um, the rings have such a significance. Uh, we have a chance for us to really consider the symbolizing of a ring. And what does it mean when we wear this wedding ring? Regardless of whether you're wearing it, it does not change the covenant that you're entering before the Lord. This isn't an agreement you're just making in the state of Illinois between each other. Okay, but most importantly, it's as if Jesus was right here with you, and he is. As you both bless each other with these rings, please remember how this ring symbolizes your commitment to each other and how it promotes God's glory to others around you. Now we may start. And you place it on your finger and repeat after me. Stephanie, it is with all my love that I give you this ring. Stephanie, it is with all my love that I give you this ring. As your husband. As your husband. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. I will live out the covenant. I will live out the covenant. 
that this ring symbolizes that this ring symbolizes in the name of the Father in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and of the Holy Spirit okay. all right and you'll repeat after me Bregi it is with all my love that I give you this ring Bregi it is with all my love that I give you this ring as your wife as your wife for the rest of my life for the rest of my life I will live out the covenant I will live out the covenant that this ring symbolizes that this ring symbolizes in the name of the Father in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and of the Holy Spirit so Stephanie and Bregi have chosen to sign the cross right so we're going to do that now And there's some significance, significance to this. Um, one, at the wood is about 80-some 80, 80 years old, made by, made by a man named Joseph, I believe. Um, and what's really neat about this is as they're signing this cross, um, that the salvation that Christ gives us today is the same salvation that came before them and the same salvation that will come beyond them uh, for their future uh, relatives, kids, whatever you may have. Um, but God will bless you and we'll continue to bless generations to come as a result. So thank you. Come on back. My pocket. <clears throat> All right, I wanted to share one final passage with you in Scripture about how God calls us to love each other as husband and wife. Paul writes this, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. His body, for which is, he is the Savior, now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husband in everything. Husband, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleaning her by washing with water through the word to present to her himself a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blameless, uh, blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but feeds and cares for it just as Christ does for the church, for we are members of his body. This is a profound mystery. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he himself loves his wife, must respect her and her husband. Now, I know that's a long passage of scripture, it's really short in what God's telling you to do here. Um, you're to love and respect your husband. But there's a whole lot in there about what you have to do. Okay? Um, you're supposed to take care of your wife. And that makes it pretty simple. I know that we have to hear things a couple times over and over to get it. You know? So I think that's a good thing. The great thing about this passage is that one feeds and supports the other. Your love and care for her, sacrificing for her, creates this response in her that can only come to you from her. It is this amount of love, honor, and respect that you need from her more than you need from anyone else outside of God. And it will come from her as you sacrifice for her. That's the commitment, and that's what the covenant is all about. Unconditional love for each other. And it starts with you, Bridget. Got it? All right. All right, so Bregi and Stephanie, you have come here today on your own free will. In the presence of God, your family, and your friends. You have declared your love and commitment to each other. You have given and received a ring as a symbol of your promises. So now it gives me great joy to say, by the power of your love and commitment, and by the power vested in me by Jesus Christ, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Bregi, you may kiss your wife. All right, turn, turn and face the crowd. Friends and family, for the very first time as husband and wife, I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Bregi Witt. Um.